Hey, welcome back to RimWorld Science with a little bit of an update on the last episode about mortars. There were some really good conversations in the comments and some good discussion and a few things I need to clear up. Now, the very first thing I need to clear up was that I made a mistake when talking about the odds of uh, hitting a ship part. And it also goes for an uh, individual part right there. And it's correct that the odds of a single mortar shell hitting like landing somewhere in here so it hits this part is 22%. But that doesn't, I, I messed up the odds of getting a hit if you have five uh, of these things shooting. And the reason is because I just made a, a fallacy of probabilistic reasoning. So the, the best way to think about it is to take not the chance of hitting, but the chance of missing, which would be uh, 78%. And uh, take that and you multiply that by every single extra mortar. So the chance of all five mortar missing is 78 to the fifth power, which is a 22% chance or so um, of a miss. So actually with five of these guys, it was about a 78% chance of hitting. Um, if you take that to the power of 10, there's about a 10% uh, chance of missing. So 10 of these, so 10 shots gives you about a 90% chance. And that's the general recipe you want to use for figuring out the chances. Now, something else that came up in discussion has to do with how the chances work when it comes to like the mountains area right here. So somewhere like this, there's still, I mean, you're aiming for uh, this spot right there. And there's still the 11 by 11 radius around it. And, ta and shells can land here on the mountaintop. But if they do, you don't get an explosion that hits anything. So if, you're, if your craft ship part is like close to a mountain like this, or whatever you're firing is close to the mountain, uh, there's actually a lower percent chance that you'll actually hit it with a given shot because some of the tiles that like in a clean situation, if you landed right here, that would be a tile that would give you explosion hurts a ship. But in this situation, if it lands right here, there's no explosion and the ship kind of comes away just fine. A third point that was made, I thought worth uh, pointing out here, is that although the mortars can target um, you know, moving animals, they don't lead them. So you can see how these all fired to back here, like behind where this mad manhunter was, instead of kind of where he is going right now. So uh, for something like a centipede that's really, really slow, that might not be such a problem. For anything that moves kind of quickly, you'll probably do better aiming at the ground where you think they're going to be, because your pawns will not lead them for you. And the final thing was a question that was a really good question, which was, is there a bigger explosion, more like more damage done from a stack of 25 shells exploding than from a single shell exploding? So let's actually find this out. Oops, a little closer. So we have two. OK, we lost. OK, we lost 10 and uh, 10 in the fire explosions right there. So let's just see where they end up when we're done. All right, that one goes. Uh, 385 and 385. So the answer is no, surprisingly. Uh, there's 200 points done of damage in both uh, cases. That extra 10 was from the fire. And it doesn't matter if it's one shell or 25, it's the same boom. So there's no advantage to like stacking shells up before blowing up or no disadvantage if you're thinking about like from a defensive uh, state. Uh, I should mention also that that 25 uh, points of damage is the exact same that is done here by an IED. So there's no advantage to using a shell instead of an IED, except you'll save on a component. But anyway, there are my updates. Thank you so much for watching. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. And I'll see you soon.